Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you may know, Microsoft released Windows Server 2025 a few weeks ago. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process of downloading and installing Windows Server 2025 as a virtual machine on VMware Workstation. So if you are setting up a test lab or want to explore the latest Windows Server features, this video will help you with that. Let's dive in. I'm using VMware Workstation as the hypervisor, but if you are using Hyper-V, VirtualBox, or VMware ESXi, the process is almost identical. Simply create a virtual machine, attach the ISO, and follow the installation wizard. But if you are installing Windows Server 2025 on a physical server, you'll need a tool like Rufus to create a bootable USB. Once the USB is ready, plug it into the server, boot from it and follow the same installation steps. Before I start downloading and installing Windows Server 2025, let's quickly go over the hardware requirements for installing the Windows Server 2025 operating system. So here are the minimum hardware requirements needed to run Windows Server 2025 as per the Microsoft documentation. For the processor, you need a 1.4 gigahertz 64-bit processor that is compatible with x64 instruction sets and supports the CPU features that are mentioned over here. At least 512 meg of RAM is required, but for the server with desktop experience installation option, you'll need 2 gig of RAM, although 4 gig of RAM is recommended. If you're using a physical server, you'll need ECC memory. You'll need at least 32 gig of disk space for a Windows Server Core installation. And coming to the network, you need a gigabit per second Ethernet adapter compliant with PCI Express architecture. Now, there are some other requirements that you need to consider. You need a UEFI 2.3.1c based system with firmware that supports TPM and Secure Boot. A graphic device with display at least 1024 by 768 resolution, SVGA or higher. Now that we know what's required, let's jump into downloading Windows Server 2025 ISO file from Microsoft's Evaluation Center. By the way, I will include a link to the Evaluation Center in the video description for you. And just in case you have a licensed copy of Windows Server 2025, you can head over to your licensed portal and download it directly from there. All right, I'm on my browser and I will head over to Google and I'll type Windows Server 2025 ISO download, select that, and I'll click on the first result, which should be Windows Server 2025 Microsoft Evaluation Center. Scroll down a little under getting started for free, click the link that says download the ISO. Now, if you scroll down on the right side, under register for your free trial today, you need to fill out the form with your details. And then click download now. And I'm going to select 64-bit edition for ISO download. Now the file size is around five gig and it will take some time to download. I've already downloaded the ISO file and saved it on my computer. So we are all set to move on. So I'm going to click on cancel. I'll close the browser. Next, let's create a virtual machine. I have opened up VMware Workstation and I'm going to click on file and select new virtual machine. In the new virtual machine wizard, I will choose typical recommended and click next. I will select, I will install the operating system later because if I choose installer disk image file ISO and select the Windows Server 2025 ISO file saved on my computer, sometimes the installer doesn't load properly and gives an error saying it cannot find the Microsoft software license terms. For now, I will click next to continue. On select the guest operating system screen, I will select Microsoft Windows for the guest operating system and keep the version Windows Server 2022 selected as it is the closest version available to Windows Server 2025 and which is not listed as an option in VMware Workstation 17.5. I'll click Next. On the name, the virtual machine screen, I will specify the name of the VM as Server 01 and I'll click Browse to choose the location where I would like to save the virtual machine files. So I'm going to create a new folder 
call it server 01 under my virtual machines folder, which is under D drive, data drive folder. All right, I'm going to click next. On the specified disk capacity screen, I will keep the default size to 60 gig and leave the split virtual disk into multiple files option selected. And I'll click next. On the ready to create virtual machine screen, you can review your selections and click the customize hardware button to make any changes to the virtual hardware assigned to the VM. I'm fine with the default settings of two gig of memory and two vCPUs. For the CD or DVD drive, I will select use ISO image file and I'm going to click browse to select the Windows Server 2025 ISO file. For the network adapter to connect to the internet, I will leave it to NAT for now. However, you can select bridged if you want this VM to be on the same network as your physical machine or choose custom if you want to select a specific network. You can also choose host only for isolated networks. And since I don't need the USB controller and sound card for this virtual machine, I will go ahead and remove them and you can add additional virtual hardware if you need it. But I'll click close for now. I'll click on finish and click on power on this virtual machine. When you see a message, press any key to boot from CD or DVD. All right, in the select language to install screen, I will choose English United States for both language to install and time and currency format options. Then I'll click next. In the select keyboard settings, I will keep US for the keyboard or input method. Then I'll click next. On the select setup options, I will select install Windows Server and check the option that says, I agree everything will be deleted, including files, apps, and settings. I'm okay with this because it's a virtual machine and there's nothing on it. Just a quick tip, if you are installing on an existing virtual machine or a physical server, I recommend backing it up before proceeding. So I'm gonna click next. On the select image screen, I will choose the edition of Windows Server. I will select Windows Server 2025 Standard Evaluation Desktop Experience, which includes the graphical user interface, GUI. If you prefer the command line version without the GUI, you can select the edition without desktop experience, which is the server core version. Let me also talk about these options for Windows Server 2025. Just like previous versions of Windows Server, Windows Server 2025 offers two installation options to choose from, server core, Note it doesn't explicitly say server core on the screen, but anything without desktop experience is the server core version. And the other option is server with desktop experience. Server core is the recommended installation option. It has a smaller footprint, including only the core components of Windows Server. And it supports most of the server roles and features without the inclusion of local graphical user interface GUI because it does not have a GUI, server core is more secure and requires fewer updates and patches. It's typically used in remote deployments, which can be managed through tools like Windows Admin Center, PowerShell, or other server management tools. On the other hand, server with desktop experience is the complete installation, which includes the full GUI. This option has larger footprint than server core, but it provides a familiar Windows environment for those who prefer a more traditional desktop experience. Both installation options have their use cases depending on your needs, so you can choose the one that best fits your requirements. So I'm gonna click on next. I'll click on accept on the license terms. A single 60 GB virtual disk, disk zero, is already selected for this virtual machine. I will use this entire disk to install the operating system, which will become the C drive in my Windows Server. Now, if you'd like to create additional partitions, you can click the Create Partition button. For now, I will click Next to proceed with using the entire disk. On the Ready to Install screen, simply click on Install to begin installation. All right, the setup will start copying the files and installing the OS and it will reboot the virtual machine a couple of times during the process. So I'm going to speed up the recording to save some time. Okay, after rebooting, you'll be prompted to set a password for the administrator account. So choose something strong. 
I'll then click on finish. I'll log into the server and I'll type in the administrator password that I've set during the setup process. Once logged in on send diagnostic data to Microsoft screen, you can send the required only diagnostic data or also include optional diagnostic data as well. So I'm going to select include optional and click on accept. As soon as you log in, it will open up the server manager interface. From here, you can begin configuring roles and features. Since this is a VMware VM, I'm going to install VMware tools to improve the performance and functionality of the virtual machine. Here is what I'll do. First, I will right click on the virtual machine server 01 and select install VMware tools. Next, I will open up Windows Explorer and click on this PC. Right click and open up my CD drive. And I'm going to double click on setup 64 to start a VMware tools installation. I'll click on next to start the installation and select complete installation and click next. Click install to begin the installation process. <laughs> Once installation is complete, I will click on finish. When prompted, I will click yes to restart the server. After the restart, I will log into the server again using the administrator credentials. And in server manager, I will click on local server. Here you will see some basic configurations that you would typically set after installing Windows Server. First thing you will need to do is rename the computer by clicking its current name here and then click on change button. For the computer name, let's go with server 01 and click on OK. You'll see a message telling you that a restart is required for the changes to take effect. I'll click OK again, click close, and then select restart later. So I'm going to restart the server later. Now it is also highly recommended to update your Windows server soon after installation. So let's do that now. So to update, I'll click on start and go to settings. And on the left side, click on Windows update and click on check for updates. All right, so you can see it is downloading the updates. Once they're downloaded, it will go ahead and install the updates automatically, and then you can reboot the server. And there you have it, Windows Server 2025 installed as a virtual machine, whether you're testing features or preparing for deployment, this video gets you started quickly. If this video helped, don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.